Biolab Jeunesse. Hi, I'm Megan from the Youth Biolab. Infectious disease is any illness caused by another organism, like a germ or a parasite, getting inside someone's body and causing health problems. Infections can affect any kind of living thing, like people, pets, plants, and even bacteria. Different infections make people feel sick in different ways. They can affect different parts of the body, cause different kinds of symptoms, and they can spread to other people at different speeds. Doctors and health scientists need to identify the specific germ that's making someone sick to help treat the illness and prevent others in the community from catching the same infection. Infectious organisms use a body as a host. They can feed off of and grow in, but they always do that in different kinds of ways. Scientists can use high power microscopes to see what germs look like. We can grow them in labs. And now using genetic testing, scientists can precisely identify different germs and test out new medicines to help us fight them. There are other infectious organisms like fungi or protozoans, but the majority of the infections Canadian health scientists are worried about are caused by bacteria or viruses. So we're gonna look a bit more close at those today. What are some common infectious microorganisms and how do they make you sick? Bacteria are about 10 times smaller than our own cells. The kinds that live on people like warm, humid places, and if they grow too much in someone's body, they might damage the cells in the area they're infecting. Some bacteria squirt out toxins that can harm us. Bacteria cause common problems like ear infections, strep throat, skin infections, urinary tract infections, and sexually transmitted infections like syphilis and chlamydia. Not all bacteria are bad though. In fact, we're all carrying around trillions of harmless and even beneficial bacteria every day on our skin and in our guts. We're mostly healthy when we're a big diverse ecosystem of lots of types of harmless or beneficial bacteria. When people have a serious bacterial infection, it's usually one particular bacteria that grows a lot, causing problems. Tuberculosis is caused by mycobacterium tuberculosis, and it causes chest pain, a bad cough, maybe even people cough up blood because of it. Other bacterial infections, like Clostridium difficile, overgrow in the guts and cause bad stomach cramps and diarrhea. If someone's immune system isn't strong enough to fight off the bacteria by themselves, they might need medicine called antibiotics to help kill the bacteria. And you might have had these in like a banana flavored liquid or in pill form. Viruses are a little different. They're about 10 times smaller than bacteria and they can't grow or reproduce on their own. To grow, viruses need to get inside a host cell and use them to make new viruses. They can make millions of copies a day inside us and spread to more of our own cells, or they can spread to other people, making them sick. The common cold, Ebola, seasonal flu, and COVID-19 are all viral infections. Viruses have structures on their surface that let them attach to specific receptors on our host cells. Some might be the right shape to attach to lung or blood vessel cells or liver cells, or even infect our white blood cells like HIV, the human immunodeficiency virus. When viruses grow in our tissues, they cause problems by damaging our cells or triggering changes that cause inflammation. Our bodies are able to get rid of most viruses easily, often without symptoms. But for some infections, there are antivirals that slow the virus down and other medications like steroids that reduce the damage of inflammation caused by our own immune response. Infectious versus contagious. How do germs spread? A contagious infection means the germs that grow in us while we're sick can spread to others and make them sick too. Some infections are very contagious, like I could get someone sick by just breathing in the same room as them. Most contagious germs need closer contact to spread, like a hug or a handshake, or if I touch something with my germy hands and then someone else touches it, they could pick up some of my germs. Some infections can only be spread by contact with blood or other bodily fluids, like HIV, which can be spread by unprotected sexual contact or a contaminated needle. But illnesses like the cold, flu, tuberculosis, COVID-19, they spread way more easily in the air by tiny germy moisture droplets just from breathing, coughing, or sneezing. And if other people breathe them in, they can become infected. Things like food poisoning are infectious, but not contagious. Food poisoning happens when a microorganism gets onto food that someone eats and then grows and makes toxins in their guts. It'll make them sick, but they won't give their food poisoning to their friends or family. 
unless they share some of their contaminated food. How do we stop the spread of infectious diseases? To prevent contagious diseases from spreading, health scientists decide what extra safety precautions people should take to avoid getting sick themselves and how they can avoid getting someone else sick if they're already infected. To make these decisions, they ask questions like, what is the germ causing the infection? How contagious is it? How dangerous is it? And who is most vulnerable to become sick? Then how is it spreading from one person to another and what could prevent the spread? Most germs get introduced into our body by us breathing them in through the nose or mouth or by someone touching their eyes or mouth with germs already on their hands. So the best way to protect yourself from catching a contagious illness is to wash your hands regularly with soap and warm water or use hand sanitizer. Masks can also help prevent the spread of respiratory infections. Germs can also get in through a cut in the skin that isn't cleaned properly, so we need to make sure to clean any wounds before putting bandages on. And things like extra barriers like condoms or a dental dam or gloves can help lower the risk of spreading a sexually transmitted infection. The best way to protect others from catching a contagious illness from you is to stay home when you're feeling sick or cover your nose and mouth when you cough or sneeze. Wear a mask if you could be contagious and always wash your hands well before you touch anything others will be using. For illnesses that spread easily and cause more serious health problems, scientists also decide if we need to develop vaccines to prevent the illness or new medicines to help treat the symptoms. Thanks for watching. We hope you learned something new about infectious diseases and microorganisms. If you want to learn more about germs and vaccines, check out our other videos in the link below. If you still have questions, send us an email or message us through our Instagram or Twitter. Thanks for joining us and stay curious. Make sure to click like and subscribe for more videos and follow us on Instagram and Twitter. To support the Youth BioLab's ongoing programming and expansion plans, please contact St. Boniface Hospital Foundation at stbhf.ca.